Hey, what's up guys? It is Mark Yoon, and today I'm bringing another hopefully exciting video. So what I got for you today is another continuation of the lore for this week, and the character that we are discussing today is none other than Talon. So we are going to just jump right into her, and uh, I'll save my thoughts for the end. The West's attempt at colonizing the islands of Southeast Asia brought with it conflict. In the mountainous region of the one particular island was a small village called the Village of the Wind. Talon was born into the family of Shaman, and was raised as the last priestess of the winds in accordance with her family's beliefs. One day, a foreigner brought to the village a fragment of metal, a fragment of soul edge itself. Talon was immediately sensed by how dangerous and vowed to return the shard to where it belonged. However, her fellow villagers were against her decision, because it was result in the last priest of the winds losing her innocence. As such, Talon felt she had to prove herself to those around her. The idyllic lifestyle of the Village of the Wind Deity was threatened by a fragment of the bearer of Bad Fortune Soul Edge. The village was more puzzled than scared, however, threatened by what they were most more by their influence of the West. In an increasingly tumultuous world, Talon was still able to perform her duties well and proved herself capable of carving her own path as the last priestess of the winds. She promised her grandmother, Kalana, known as the Eldest One, that they would meet again and left her island on a journey. The wind travels the world, and wherever Talon went, its gentle caress would soothe her soul. As to the previous installments, Talon is strikingly meek, innocent, kind, moderate, and nice in contrast to the rest of the Soul Series cast, often attempting to dissuade opponents from fighting, and constantly showing mercy to her defeated enemies. Her comments often reveal self-doubt and worry. She is also special in that she can hear the sound of the wind and sense evil. The Southeast Asian fighting style that uses two elbows blades to perform quick combinations originating from a sword dance dedicated to the spirits of the wind. This style's graceful jumps and whirls make dodging, breezes, dodging attacks a breeze. The cyclonic wind charmer can initiate a combo. The wind salt is perfect for surprising a foe like a sudden gust. The gale force wind fury unleashes a powerful strike. All these moves and more allow the fighter to harmonize with the wind earning its protection and its power. Wind Dance On a small island in Southeast Asia, there exists a tribe who worships the wind. One of this tribe's primary methods of prayer is sword dance, which requires both elegance and grace to perform. However, nature is not a gentle mistress, and the soothing basic forms of the sword dance often translate into violent whirls and wild leaps. Like the wind itself, the sword dance is sometimes a mild breeze and sometimes a fierce gale. The wind is both ceaseless and formless, and its worshippers believe that the continental mo motion during prayer can bring you closer to it. A true master is considered to be one who can lose themselves entirely in the dance. The tribe believes that those who have become one with the wind, and that this is the highest form of worship. The last priestess of the winds is a true master, and if she invokes the winds during her sword dance, it would obey her and slice their opponents like a blade. I have to admit that Talim was always one of those characters that escaped me uh, when using. I usually used her style for some creative characters that used uh, elemental attacks such as like the Flash who would do like his wind punch so whenever I would create him I would use that for him. Even though it's a little effeminate for his character but it still worked for what it did. Uh, I just didn't know much about Talon before even though I played all of the game series, like all of them, except for the one that was on iOS. Um, she just never really appealed to me, I guess, because I think it was because of that, like, pure innocence, and with innocence usually often is paired with naivete, and naivete is the bedfellow of stupidity, in my opinion. It's, uh, an ignorance that's not there, like, lacking for trying. It's just pretty much innocently going about your way, and it embodies that old narrative that ignorance is bliss kind of thing. Um, it seemed like that she was only doing what she was doing because it was uh, her culture or because it was passed down to her and her ideals and her opinions, none of which was her own. She was just like gliding through life like a, like a calm breeze, you would say. But I, I don't know if this new lore has made me like more impactful with actually caring about her. It might just be that I just don't connect with the character personally. Uh, I do know that um, a friend of mine is 
really into her and uses her quite often, but I'm just not... I don't know, I never felt compelled by the character to connect to it enough to use it. I'd actually think that in the entirety of the entire Soul Calibur franchise, she's like the one character I never ever connected with. Um, I will make an attempt to actually try that, because I think that all the characters are written wonderfully in this game, so there should be something there for me to connect with. I just have to delve deeper and I guess expand my horizons hard enough to try and get into using the character. This might mean stepping away from creative characters for a while and actually using the cast characters so that like I can try to find a group with them like I did before 3 ever came out. And even a lot more in 3 actually because I wasn't the, the creative character system wasn't super good in that game until 4 came around and fixed a lot of improvements. But um... I don't know, I don't really have much to say at it because like, I never really connected too much to the character, but that's her lore in the new timeline. So, any old thoughts are always appreciated in the comment section down below. And I have a quest for you guys. I want you guys to describe and tell me in the comments why I should like tell him, or more so, give me some uh, reasons why you connect with her and maybe I can connect with those reasonings through your own experiences. Uh, any and all thoughts are always welcome in the comment section down below, and that's where we're going to end today's video. And as always, guys, thank you, and thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? Have you always wanted some sweet Mark Yoon merch? Maybe a Thick You shirt, maybe a shirt from Squirt, maybe my pretty face with my logo all over your body, or a throw pillow, or blanket, or anything? Well, you're in luck, because I just launched my merch store, and it is going to be available on Redbubble, and you will find a link to it in my description box down below. It's got a lot of quality content. And a lot of good stuff for you to pick up so you can show your support for the channel and just rep Mark Yoon. Alright guys, as always, thank you.